Hello students, today we are going to discuss about a very interesting topic and that is waves. So as you can see in my background, there are water waves which are moving through the river. So just observe these water waves. Now if anyone asks you, how do they appear to you? So what would you answer? Well, you would say that something seems to be moving from one point to another. But then is it actually true? Is actually something moving from one point to another? Well, let's explore it with the help of an example. So as we can see here, it's a very beautiful and a calm lake. And here we are going to first understand the formation of a wave. So what I do now is, I simply throw a stone in this lake. And what do you observe? Yes, you can see that there are certain concentric circles which are forming on the water surface and these appear to move in the outward direction. But then do you know what these concentric circles are called? Okay students, before I tell you what these concentric circles are actually called, firstly let me tell you the concept of concentric circles. So the concept of concentric circles is nothing more than a circle around another circle with same center but different radii. Now these concentric circles so formed in the still lake upon throwing a stone in the lake, they are called as ripples. And ripples are the disturbances that you notice in the form of concentric circles. So whenever we throw a stone in a still lake or a pond, these disturbances in the form of ripples, they are created. Now observe this video clip very carefully. You can see here that a duck is floating in the lake. And do you observe any change in the lake, especially around the area where the duck is floating? Well, yes, the duck is producing certain disturbances in the water around it in the lake. When the duck is floating, so you see these disturbances on the water surface? Okay, so what are these disturbances then? Well, let's understand this also by performing a simple experiment. So again, here is a still lake or a pond and this time I first drop a piece of cork in it. Now what happens to the cork? So since cork is a lightweight substance, so it starts floating on the surface of the lake. And now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to once again throw a stone in the lake. And what do you observe this time now? Well, yes, as expected, you would see certain ripples which are formed in the lake. But then what happened to the cork which I had dropped earlier in the same lake? Well, many of you would be thinking that the cork, it will start to move along with the ripples in the outward direction. But that is not what we observe with the cork. Instead, as you can see here, that as soon as the disturbances they are created, by the stone which was thrown in the lake, when they reach the cork, the cork it starts undergoing to and fro or you can say the up and down motion about its mean position. Strange right? But then there's a scientific reason behind this. So when a stone is thrown in the still water, it sets the water particles into motion and they start undergoing to and fro motion about their mean position. Now what happens soon after these water particles, they are set into vibrations. To analyze this, let us now zoom to see the enlarged view of the actual surface of lake. So if we consider these yellow dots as water particles, then you can see that these particles, they are actually undergoing up and down motion about their mean position. And these particles, they are not traveling along with the water waves. So if one water particle is set into to and fro motion, it causes its neighboring particle also to vibrate in to and fro motion. In this manner, the kinetic energy possessed by one vibrating particle, it is carried to the neighboring particle through wave motion without the actual particle moving from its actual mean position to a new mean position. As a result, only the energy gets transported along the way without the transportation of any matter. And so in this way, the disturbances, they travel in the outward direction. 
And while the disturbances they travel in the outward direction, the cock continues to vibrate in to and fro motion about its mean position. It does not move outward along with the ripples, which clearly demonstrates that the particles just vibrate about their mean position. And it is the disturbance or the energy of the particle which travels along with the wave. Now consider this situation with a simple arrangement where a group of people they are standing in a horizontal line and all of them are holding each other through their shoulders. So what will happen if the first person he tries to sit? So when the first person he tries to sit, he pulls his neighboring person also to sit down. And when he stands up, he again pulls his neighboring person also to stand up. So it keeps on going that way. And if you are an observer, then what would you observe from such sitting and standing ex exercise? Well, you would, you would observe that something is going from one side to another. And it seems like a wave. But in reality, each person is only undergoing up and down motion. Or you can say the to and fro motion. And he or she is not moving from one place to another place. So always remember, it is not the particles of the medium that travel in the forward direction. It is only the disturbances that are carried forward. And as discussed earlier, this is the reason why the cock, it moves only up and down about its mean position when the disturbances they are created on the water surface by dropping the stone in the water. So sometimes the information which you may think is moving is not actually moving. It does not move from one place to another, but it is only undergoing to and fro motion. Now consider this situation. Here is a rope whose one end is free while the other end it is fixed. Now if we just give a whip to it, then what do you observe here? Well, you observe that something again seems to be moving across the rope, right? Right. But then is actually something going across the rope? Well, you guessed it right. Nothing is going anywhere. It's only the particles again that are undergoing to and fro motion. Now, just to make this concept a little bit more easier and clear, we paste red dots on these, on this rope. And let's consider them as the particles of the rope. Now, when we just whip this rope once again, so you can see that these red dots, they undergo to and fro motion only, while the disturbance it gets carried forward. So with this, we can once again infer that the information can be transferred or transmitted even without the actual particle moving from one position to another position. The particles, they can undergo to and fro motion about their mean position. And then they can set the neighboring particles also to undergo the same to and fro motion. So it looks like that the particle is moving, but it is actually this, the disturbance and not the particle itself that gets carried forward. So having discussed so many examples now to demonstrate the formation of a wave, let us now together make an attempt to define a wave. So if I ask you, how would you define a wave? What's a wave? Yes, so a wave can be described as a disturbance that travels through a medium from one location to another location without transporting any matter. So students, with this, we come to the end of this module on introduction of wave. And in our next module, we are going to discuss about the different types of waves.